Hey, welcome to Histories in Under 5, and today I'll be looking at William Wallace. 700 years after his death, Sir William Wallace is still remembered as a hero of Scotland and a symbol of Scottish nationalism. Wallace was born into a minor noble family. In modern times, he would be viewed as a member of the upper middle class. His fame stems from his role as a Scottish military leader during the Scottish Wars of Independence, fought during the late 13th and early 14th centuries. Wallace's greatest military success was his victory at Stirling Bridge on the 11th of September 1297. He was in joint command of the Scottish Army alongside Andrew Moray, who would die from wounds sustained during the battle. The battle commenced with the British attempting a crossing of the narrow Stirling Bridge, which was only wide enough to allow two horsemen side by side to advance at any given time. The Scots waited patiently until a significant portion of the English army had crossed the bridge. At this stage, the Scots attacked the English forces that had already crossed. The attack was a resounding success, and by the end of the battle, the Scottish had won the day, with an estimated 5,000 English soldiers dead. In the aftermath of the battle, Wallace was knighted and was named Guardian of Scotland. If history was a fairy tale, this is where we would end the story. However, the following year, in 1298, the King of England himself, Edward I, decided that he would personally lead an army into Scotland. Wallace attempted to avoid a pitched battle with the English, hoping that a lack of supplies would eventually force the English to withdraw, at which time he could counter-attack the retreating English forces. However, Edward was eventually able to force the Scottish into battle at Falkirk. At the Battle of Falkirk, the English army was at least twice the size of the Scottish army. The Scottish army was made up mostly of spearmen, while Edward's forces were made up of archers, cavalry and infantry. In the end, the Scottish were outnumbered, outgunned and unable to resist the onslaught of the English army. Wallace was lucky to escape with both his life and freedom. Following his defeat, Wallace resigned as Guardian of Scotland, a position taken up by Robert de Bruce. In the years following Falkirk, Wallace was a wanted man. And in late 1305, Wallace was finally captured in Scotland and transported to London for trial. He was charged with treason, to which he argued that as Edward was not his king, he could not possibly be found guilty. Eventually, and inevitably, he was found guilty and hung, drawn and quartered. So William Wallace is remembered as a national hero of Scotland. In more recent times, Mel Gibson portrayed him in the movie Braveheart. Fortunately, the true Braveheart was Robert de Bruce, not William Wallace. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to see more history in under five minutes.